existence is a sin. But others know he is a necessary evil. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Between Physique, otherwise known as Big Fluffy Pale Marshmallow Matt. So, I wanted to take this opportunity in this video to kind of go over my physique and how it's progressed and kind of give a physique update, but not just an update, show you guys a progression. I think one of the problems of the fitness industry is so many times guys show before and after and it's like, that's it, you know, whoop the fucking do. Like, that's not indicative of the grueling months spent cutting and you know, the cardio and the diet and the fact that this is a very slow process. You guys are going to see, I'm going to throw a bunch of clips in here and you're going to see how the physique changes week to week. And it is very small progression, starting off with my very first bear mode. Oh God, no, not that bear mode, wrong bear mode. This is the beginning. I was 205 pounds, like I said. Now jumping ahead one week in, 200 pounds, not much of a difference. Usually the first, you know, five, 10 pounds are just water weight glycogen like I've talked about in the past. But again, I just want to show you guys Another interesting thing is when it comes to my back, even though the rest of me is fairly fluffy, like you'll see in this footage, four weeks in, jumping ahead to 195 pounds, you know, the first 10 pounds, the easiest 10 pounds are gone. My back is pretty lean. Like this is what some people look like when they're like 10, 12 weeks in because of different genetic body fat distribution. For me, fat has always accumulated in my frontal body. This, that makes absolutely no sense. And my legs especially, that's, you know, as you guys can see here, but on my back, legit at 12% body fat, my back already starts to look like shredded, whereas the rest of my body is like just starting to get lean. Honestly, guys, like 10 weeks out from my show, my back will pretty much be done. But you know, that's just me. Everyone is, you know, different genetically. And this is six weeks in. And as you guys can see, those, you know, Google Maps, those veins, that vascularity, finally starting to come in and it's a good feeling. So 191.3 pounds. This, you know, once we start crossing over into the 180s, guys, that is when I finally start to, I'm not shredded by any means, but that's when I cross over into that leanness. Um, this is one of the things that kind of annoys me about my physique is these kind of like love handle-ish things on the side. But I have to be careful about that terminology because they're not really love handles. In fact, Marius Pozhanovsky, I've always kind of looked at him because he has a similar body structure in some ways. These thick ass obliques on the side. And trust me, he's like a world class strongman. In fact, I think he's the best strongman of all time. It's kind of like the Ronnie Coleman of the strongman sport. He has the same, you know, pair of muscular obliques on the side. So a benefit of this is, you know, just more muscle. You'll probably be stronger with things like the deadlift, the squat, it kind of helps you, you know, maybe, you know, his body and mine is made for more performance style strongman or powerlifting sports. But on the negative side is that it kind of, it makes it more difficult to have that narrow-ish waist. I will never, ever have a tiny, tiny, like, you know, 29, 30 inch waist, kind of like, you know, Jeff side and all those guys, because I'm not genetically built that way. But you know what, guys, change what you can accept and accept what you can change. And this is a good example of that. Oh, I just wanted to show this is the new Alphalete Stringer. And I friggin love this thing. The attention to detail and the quality is just, it's awesome. But let's get into the workout with starting with some raw footage.
again, it's not even the weight. Could have probably done nine or ten. Like this. It's just. Okay, guys. So four or five for eight reps. Not bad. I could have gone as high as you know nine to ten, perhaps. You know, if I had brought my uh, wrist straps and if I if I wasn't such a little bitch. But the reason I wanted to show this is to illustrate kind of an interesting point. So my body, it loses strength on a carbohydrate and caloric deficit as you know, most of you probably do, but it loses it in different, you know, rates at different you know, body parts. So my back retains strength rather well, honestly, like even a few weeks out from my, uh, my show, I can probably still hit like, you know, like five or six ish reps. But when it comes to things like my legs, they lose the like the strength so fast. And that's kind of the reason why I haven't been putting as much leg and squat workout footage on my channel recently, because it kind of sucks uh, going from 355 for three sets of eight. That was the heaviest I ever went um, as a PR uh, this off season, going as far as 315 for two to three reps, one set. Yeah. That's it. it. Guys, it it sucks, I will be honest. But again, complete and total transparency. Um, I want to show you guys this because it's kind of unrealistic when I see in social media guys like posting their best workouts and they're just like shredded to the bone. They're like, you know, dropping 20 pounds there, you know, like ripped. But then they're like, hey, man, it just, you know, I'm like 12 weeks into my cut and I'm still hitting PRs and you can't do it too if you, you know, do this. And I'm like, what? That doesn't, that's un, it's an unrealistic standard. And uh, unless the person's like a complete and total genetic anomaly or he's like on something, you know, like gear or, or whatever, I really don't see that as being a, a viable, you know, option. I mean, some people are going to lose strength faster. Some people are going to, you know, be a little bit luckier and not lose strength as much. But the people who like pretty much lose none or actually get stronger during a cut, I'm like, bullshit. That is I, something is, is ridiculous about that. And in some ways, it actually makes people kind of think like, oh, if, if he's doing that, why can't I? I actually had a client who messaged me and he's on a cut. He's lost um, like, you know, like eight or something pounds in about, you know, three ish weeks, which is he's doing fantastic. And he messaged me and he's like, you know what? I, uh, I had to drop the weight and uh, I don't, it, you know, it sucks. I want to keep on hitting PRs. I want to keep on getting stronger, but you know, I'm cutting. And I told him, you know what, man, this is where the hard decisions come in. What are you doing? Are you trying to cut? Or are you trying to be, you know, stronger? Are you trying to be a powerlifter? Because for the majority of people, unless they're like, you know, taking advantage of those new gains, you can't do, you know, um, both at the same time. It It's an unfortunate side effect, but that is where the hard choices come in. I told them, drop the weight, keep doing the workout, keep training intense. If you can still get the reps at a lower weight, that's okay. Hit your macros, work intense. That's all that matters.